A basketball game is going on and coach Amros is very worried about the outcome of the game, so he calls everyone involved and explains to them that they are not playing golf and therefore they need points. Meanwhile, Kevin Durant, the famous basketball player, is masterfully circling everyone and scoring goals. Brian watches TV and cheers on his idol Kevin. After the game, he goes out into the yard and practices, trying to be the coolest basketball player ever. This is filmed by his sister Ashley and makes fun of him. At this time Kevin Durant is being questioned by the paparazzi, they are very interested in how he became such a successful athlete, but he gives no answer and is rescued by his manager. He signs off on the fan stuff and leaves. A friend comes up to Brian and tells him that he hacked the site, and Brian notices a hottie passing in the hallway who smiles at him. The friend says her name is Isabel, but he's managed to get obsessed with her himself. Brian takes steps toward the girl to talk, but one of the guys turns on a video on the TV of Brian falling into a basketball basket. The girl still has sympathy for the guy and feels sorry for the way he is being treated. Brian leaves without ever speaking to the girl. He comes home, lies down on his bed and tosses the ball around wistfully until his father walks into the room and suggests he go to the Thunderbirds with him. They go to the game, and Brian gets a unique opportunity to throw the ball into the basketball basket. If it happens, he gets $20,000. But how will he do it if he can't even get a good shot at the basket near his house? The guy throws the ball and hits the mascot, who falls to the ground after the shot. Brian gets upset, but his father supports him in every way possible. Suddenly he sees Kevin Durant himself in the hallway and is shocked. Brian says he wishes he had some of his talent, to which the man replies that it's a lot of work. Something flares up between them, but no one pays any attention to it and they say goodbye. Brian wakes up in his bed and throws all the clothes from the shower straight into the hamper. Mitch tells Brian that his failed throw was seen by many people because Connor posted the video on the internet. 2000 views in the first few hours. Brian discovers an unusual talent, he can spin objects right on his finger. Brian and Mitch go to the amusement park with Ashley. The sister runs away and the boys walk through the park and notice Isabel with the cool guys from school and her boyfriend can't throw a ball in the hoop at one of the rides. Brian laughs at him, but he hears this and throws the guy the ball to throw it himself. Brian leaves with his friend, thinking it's a waste of time, but at the last second he turns around and hits it right in the ring. The tough guy throws him the ball to throw again, and he hits it again. It happens three times in a row and the guys leave and Brian gives the winnings to Isabel, who is left standing alone. They finally get to know each other and leave the amusement park together, leaving the tough guys with nothing. Suddenly, Kevin Durant's manager notices that the athlete is not hitting the ring at all. He swears at the athlete and he replies that he's having a slump, which happens to every athlete. Brian, on the other hand, is different, he can do anything he's ever dreamed of, including the overhead throw. During a high school game, Brian asks to be on the school team, but no one wants him to play for them. Then the kid takes the ball and the other kid has no choice but to step in. Brian masterfully skirts the basketball player and scores, one by one, shocking the whole team and all the coaches. When he defends the basket, he doesn't get lost and repels all attacks. Suddenly the coach himself comes out to him and tries to scare the guy, but he beats the man, bypasses all the other basketball players and puts the ball in the basket. Now the coach has to remember his name is Brian. In his spare time, Brian practices shooting the hoop with his friend, and Mitch shoots everything to get the guy's reputation back. Brian's first basketball game begins, but no one passes him the ball. The coach insists that the players give him the ball. Indeed, as soon as Brian gets the ball, he breaks through all the players and throws it into the basket. Parents are shocked and delighted at the same time, and some begin to wonder about Brian himself. Coach Amros rejoices wholeheartedly. From then on, fame descends on Brian, everyone can't figure out how he became such a successful basketball player if he's so short. Everyone at school is starting to surround him, and Mitch has even made t-shirts with his face on them. Meanwhile, the games go on, and the kid continues to perform at the highest level, scoring amazing goals. The coach always leaves him on the court, and the whole school continues to fan him. Meanwhile, Kevin Durant's career is going down the drain, he's already being discussed on TV and told he's playing like a rookie. His manager keeps weaving behind him, and his mother suddenly shows up at practice to motivate him, but he doesn't lose faith in himself. Brian is carting with Isabel, and his personal life is getting better. Kevin does a commercial for athletic shoes, but can't even run with the ball to the basket without falling over. The crew gets rid of the man as soon as possible and leaves, saying he sucks. Kevin Durant is constantly being discussed on TV, and people notice that it's as if Brian has stolen Kevin's talent. Alan notices this too and goes to Brian's high school game. Isabel is crazy about Brian. Sitting in the gym, Alan is shocked by Brian's abilities and sets up a meeting with Kevin, explaining that the guy who once wore the towel is now Oklahoma City's best player. 
Kevin doesn't believe him and laughs at such speculation. Brian arrives with Isabel at a party and chats with the girl about stuff, they get to know each other better, but Alan sits down with him and starts questioning the guy about his talent, then gives him a business card, stopping the teenagers from interrupting their date. Kevin and Alan himself arrive at the school in the morning, under the guise of a youth program. It's all set up by Alan, he tries his best to make Kevin's power flow back to Brian, but nothing happens, and then they walk around the kid's school talking about everything. No matter how hard Alan tries, he fails to get Kevin's strength back, and Brian continues to play like a pro, but his team gets angry at the guy's overly strong initiative, because basketball is a team game after all. People continue to humiliate Kevin, saying they've never thrown worse than he has. Brian throws a party, but Isabel clearly doesn't appreciate it, she notices who Brian is turning into and doesn't want him to be. Mitch can't see his friend at all. The girl leaves and Alan bursts into the party and directly asks the guy to give Kevin his talent back. He explains to the boy that it's not fair to use someone else's talent like that and cheat everyone around him, including his father. Brian reflects on his words. Coach Amros gathers everyone together and tells them there is only one game left. Everyone rejoices and celebrates the impending victory, and Brian finally sees Isabel. She tells him that she liked the guy even before his basketball successes, and now he's a different person, but that's when Brian is invited into the gym and has to leave the girl. He stays after everything and talks to the coach, who calms the guy down and says they're almost in the state playoffs, so he shouldn't get upset. Brian can't find himself after that conversation with Alan and calls Kevin's manager. He drives up to his house and takes him to the gym where Kevin is just training. They need to get the basketball talent back, no matter what, but how? Alan asks Brian to show them the different moves Kevin used to make and the basketball player doesn't believe he can repeat them, but still Brian repeats each and every one, scoring flawlessly. Alan arranges different rituals, trying to repeat what happened after the game, he makes them repeat the same words, makes them electrocute each other and everything in between, just so Kevin gets his talent back. Nothing works out and Brian just looks at the departing basketball star. The guy can't find his place and goes to Isabel's house to apologize. The girl lets him in and Brian talks about taking the talent away from Kevin Durant. She can't believe what he says for a long time, but later agrees with the guy, because he really did just recently wear the towel and is now a better player. He shows her his shot at that ill-fated game and notices that the ball landed in the mascot. Brian is struck by the fact that maybe the mascot is the reason Kevin's power was passed on to him. Some kind of static electricity? He escapes from Isabel's house, gets on his bike and rides to the Thunderball game, where Kevin is just playing, and breaks through the rows of guards right onto the basketball court. He tells Kevin that he figured out how to get his power back. A mascot just happens to be nearby and Brian throws the ball at him, then asks Kevin to say Brian's phrase about wanting to have his talent. And as if by magic, something flashes between them again, some kind of magic, after which the basketball star returns to the court and shows aerobatics in his spirit. Goal after goal and good old Kevin Durant returns to the court, taking the Thunderbirds to the top. Brian wakes up and decides to test his abilities before heading off to school. As before, he no longer gets to the basket. He goes back to school and develops a relationship with Mitch, whom he has managed to hurt badly, and says he will come to their Warcraft game convention. Brian notices Isabel, who has managed to guess that the boy gave his talent to Kevin yesterday, just like he said. But Brian is haunted by doubts, how will he be able to win back the most important game in his school's history if he's once again a towel-swinging loser? The girl says he'll figure something out and takes him under her arm. Coach Amros walks into the locker room before the game and motivates the guys by saying that people are rooting for them, which means they can't lose. There's a chance to make it to the state finals on the line. The coach asks Brian to say some motivational words to the team and he keeps telling the guys not to get upset if they lose. The match starts and the guy looks over to his sweetheart, who believes in him. Brian's team keeps giving him passes, but he's afraid to shoot the ball and doesn't get to the basket at all. The coach calls the team up and asks Brian to pull himself together, saying that he is their horse. Brian tries his best and plays his best, but it's not enough, and the team is still holding up well. The coach gets the guys back together and tries to motivate them even more, but it's like something keeps Brian from relaxing and playing as if he has Kevin's strength left. Suddenly, Kevin himself comes onto the court and looks at Brian, as if wishing him a good game. Brian sees this, walks up to the guys and says that since he's not playing well today, let them finally play as a team as a unit, and fight for every ball. The guys agree and they start playing. Brian starts calling the shots and thinking out a strategy where the team goes up. Despite their not so great skills, acting cohesively, they play as one, like Brian, with Kevin's strength. With 15 seconds left in the match, someone gives Brian a pass and he scores the decisive goal, but with his own strength, without any other talents and the team wins. Kevin waves to the kid and walks off with a cheering Alan, and Brian is lifted into his arms and shouted his name. 
His parents are also very happy to see him win. In his free time, Brian comes to the gym to train with Kevin, they jokingly reminisce about how they once exchanged talents and start training. Brian is still a bad player, but he tries, and now he knows that talent isn't just innate, it's hard work, so he trains day in and day out.